yesterday I, uh, I, to my surprise, I got a uh, booking session from a very old client of mine. Okay, we have not been in touch for a couple of years. So this guy, uh, he paid the rate, but he played my previous rate, which was very less. And I was curious, was he the same guy? So we came on the call. He said, hey, Loy, I paid for your session. I said, uh, first, we, I said, just, you know, how things, you know, it has been ages. Because he's a director of a multinational company. Big guy. Pretty big guy. Okay. So then I said, uh, it's been ages. Uh, what's happening? He said, no, first we went with the ple pleasantries, how things and this and that and How's life? How's your family? Okay. After everything, he told me, Lord, I need to take your services. Uh, I asked him for what? He said for business branding, resume, rebranding, everything. So, immediately I told him, see, listen, uh, what you're paid for is what I used to do many, many years ago. Now the rate is so and so. He was shocked. He was like, shit, are you serious? I said, yeah. But I told him because he was my, yeah, he was a well-wisher of mine. I told him, you don't have to pay this this amount. You can pay a smaller amount because, you know. But it was still, I think, five times higher than what he paid. So he was a little taken aback, but, you know, he paid, he paid. He is not a guy who will say no. So, um, you know, before we started, I just... Gave him a rundown of the things that he did not see on social media. You know, obviously, he told me he was following me on social media whenever he was free. <coughs> but uh, I told him about uh, key areas of my life he didn't know about. And how I had gradually, my business had grown and uh, people got in touch with me. And um, I filled him in with the details. And then when I asked him about him, he surprised me first by telling me that he got, uh, you know, he got terminated from his company. Multinational company, he was a, at a director level, you know, very high. So I was like, oh shit, that's bad. And then he also shared with me the stories of uh, the other colleagues of his. He said, I was able to take it because I have savings and you know, I was always planning for my retirement. He's saying, uh, only thing it happened a bit earlier. But he's saying, other colleagues of mine, they never thought that they would uh, get terminated. They never planned for their retirement. Uh, many of them, you know, obviously had loans and future plans, like taking mortgage loan, personal loan. Uh, some had credit cards. Some had their children who had to complete, uh, uh, you know, high profile colleges says so, so he told me that uh, some of the people were even crying he's saying Loy, I saw people who had an iron clad face who looked more like uh, nothing would hurt or harm them or nothing would affect them they were always had a like you know powerful face he's saying they broke down with tears and they were crying he said in one instance one guy even collapsed, you know, fell down on the ground. So I just listened and he, he, he was, you could make out that he was upset. He was visibly upset because he had spent the entire life of his in this company. You know, you can imagine you spend like 15, 20 years in a company and you build relationships, uh, friendships uh, outside the office. And uh, it's it's like a kind of a college, you know, where everyone knows everyone. You spend 15 to 20 years, you've grown old with each other. And one fine day you're told, okay, guys, this is the end of the road. Bye-bye. He's saying, uh, he told me that you know, everyone was very upset. And he himself took around two months just to recover from that. I was a little, I was like, wow, okay. You know, it's, uh, it really makes you 
realize how life is. You know, you never predict what's going to happen. You never think about what's what's going to happen. I I never thought I would be here in Samui. Never. I never thought I would get married to a Thai wife. You know, and um, lately because of this COVID nineteen crisis, I've been speaking to quite a number of people in UAE. Quite a number. It's it's really shocking that uh, people who are earning seventeen thousand dirhams, twenty thousand, forty thousand, big, big, big salaries, they can't even afford to pay for my services. It's okay. Maybe it could be. Maybe my services they don't find is worth the price. Fine, <laughs> but. You're talking of guys who are earning such big, incredible salaries. You know, like you're talking of like five digits in dirhams, and they say that they can't afford it. Then you ask them, like, what the fuck did you do with your money, man? And always the answer is, "Loy, you know, I had some commitments. I made some mistakes." That's that's one thing which I noticed that is that's been happening. It's like everyone assumes that good days will be there forever. You know, you're invincible. Nothing bad is going to happen, and it uh, really makes you think. Like, oh shit, you know. Then the other side is uh, I've noticed that people what they're doing on social media. You know, ever since this lockdown. It's obvious many people can't go to work, so many people are stuck at home. Mm. I'm sure you must have seen these uh, uh, updates. This, the most cringe-worthy is this TikTok, where you see grown people, seriously grown-ass people do. I don't know, call it silly stuff or humor or. Okay, one or two is okay, but then when you keep scrolling to TikTok. Everyone's doing. I don't know. It's. It doesn't even. It makes me wonder. Like, okay, this is not your. Uh, uh, you know, you're not earning a daily bread and butter. But then, why are you doing this? Don't you have something else to do? Maybe people want to forget their problems. That's why they're doing. You can walk here. Let her walk in the grass. So. Grown ass people doing this now. You might say, "Law isn't that harmless." Uh, you know, shouldn't they be doing their thing? But my question is, what is your priority? What is your focus? What is this addiction towards social media? What you know, I was I was penniless on the streets of India in two thousand eleven. The first thing that didn't come to my mind is make some TikTok videos and. Make some funny stuff and do some dance and sing and get some likes and get some comments. No, uh, mine was put your head down, make money. Just put your head fucking down, make money. That's the only thing that I was interested. In. That's the only thing I was focused about. And uh, because I, I had, uh, you know, nothing to fall back on. I, I didn't, I didn't give a fuck about. Uh, what a popularity vote or uh, getting likes. In, in fact, if you look at today's generation, uh, not ju- not just the youngsters. Today's grown-ups and everyone. Now, see, Modi make uh, made a uh, announcement. Okay, you're going to get some million millions uh, as some relief. And uh, uh, I asked people. Okay, what is this uh, relief all about? Um, can you just fill me in? So immediately, the whole group went alive. My WhatsApp group, and there were BJP supporters, Congress supporters, there were communists in my group, and they were going at it. Oh my goodness! The messages kept coming. You know, like my phone by mistake, I'd put it on on because. I just finished this conversation with that director guy, and uh, it was you know loud. So you could hear ting, ting, tong, ting, ting, ting. I was like, what the fuck is 
telegram and uh, uh, some people wanted to send me confidential stuff and sending in telegram some people were sending whatsapp groups i tried to reach some of them but after that it became just too many i just <laughs> put the whole fucking thing on mute fuck people were arguing left right and center and then i was getting actual people who are part of modi's government the some of the you know four guys who know the he he one of them is a educated guy is a friend of mine he told me loy hits do these guys even know what they're talking about i told him i have no idea who, <laughs> what anyone's talking about he's saying loy i'm part of you know he's part of modi's you know cabinet or whatever he said do they even know what the fuck they're talking about have they even read the print or the fine print and i said no then why the fuck are they talking it's like i have no fucking idea and he just said god help india you know so he just voiced a very common uh, fact you get people who will uh, comment argue fight debate spend all their time on social media without having any knowledge of the subject or without being an expert on the subject yes you should have an opinion i'm not saying you shouldn't have an opinion just because let's say for example um if i get into a debate with someone someone asking for my credentials okay what is your education level how much you study so what does that mean only a phd guy in phd has common sense lay person i i'm a school dropout how come i'm teaching and training people who are so capable and so accomplished i'm not even at that level but i specialize in my subject so but however when i do give an opinion i make sure that i attach it with logic this today's generation is nothing old and young is nothing but a google.com they will just read the headlines they will read two three things jump the bandwagon now for example this uh, now modi is is one now people are going left right and center you asked him what was written in the uh law what was written in the policy that he has announced i'm pretty sure nobody can talk about it they will just say the headlines now let's go to this qatari female this qatari female i shared the headlines because that's what i knew and uh, i spoke to a qatari pilot he told me how they got terminated <laughs> now i got people from india bangladesh sri lanka sending me messages abusing me okay you you're a bastard you're a this you're a i don't know why they were so offended They're like do you even know who this qatari female is i said no do you they saying no but she took advantage of the company she had an affair with a boyfriend she didn't complete her education how the fuck do you know all this like did you did she talk to you did she tell you no i read it somewhere okay where where is the link <laughs> what and people are literally arguing with each other fighting and the why do you think today you will see people opening up uh, uh, when you open up facebook they will have photographs of them having a zoom session six seven people okay we successfully completed a zoom session uh, you'll have uh, guys saying oh i washed the dishes they will show that they washed the dishes uh people they have to show look i'm alive i'm on social media you know i'm there guys look at me i look i'm i'm doing the same okay but in my case yes it has always been my addiction but i have learned to commercialize it i have to make money out of it but uh, if i didn't have the money i wouldn't be on it because it's counterproductive like i told you 2011 when i was on the streets that video of mine was going to be my last video where i was going to kill myself after that if you see i don't have any videos on 2011 onwards until 
I started, uh, I had made up my mind, I'm going to make a career offline, online to make money as a trainer. People have something to do, don't come online. You know, they don't put all this nonsense. I, I have these clients who I speak to. Uh, you should see their faces. They are like full beard and uh, scruffy look. and But they are focused on their work. And I ask them, like, what did you do? They'll give me details. Why I did this, this meeting, that. You'll not see them go on social media. Now, let's, let's imagine this guy, uh, uh, London Real. Now, London Real, this guy has been coming for uh, what? Asking for donations and money. And uh, and he has been bringing all these conspiracy theorists, these people who claim that uh, there's a reptilian race, people who are half lizards, half reptile snakes, they're ruling us. There's a Illuminati, there's a world power, there is uh, 5G towers are somehow... 5G towers are spreading the virus or... Uh, they are here to control us. Bill Gates is uh, wants to insert a microchip in a vaccine. So much of bullshit is there. Oh my goodness. It's like for every coronavirus announcement, there is a coronavirus conspiracy. And this conspiracy theorists are having a field day. See, I predicted the end of the world. This is the Illuminati. This is World War Three. Ah, uh, fuck. Trust me, if you receive messages, I receive 10 times more. So everyone's like, no, I told you, man, I told you this is going to happen. Okay, so 5G towers will spread the virus. And then there is this lady who got arrested. Dr. Fauci is a bad guy. Uh, Donald Trump is controlled by the Illuminati. And Okay. Now... There are two sides, okay? There's just two sides. But here's the part where that really gets to me. These guys who are talking about freedom platform, freedom, like, you know, and they are arguing and they are fighting. And I just always ask them, I always take interest in the person to ask them, okay, tell me about yourself. What do you do? Where do you work? Do you have a family? Do you have a job? We have like savings and what's your future. When you start asking these people about their own life, you know, they either begin to wonder, then where are your priorities, man? I mean, you are worried about world domination, digital freedom, uh, what, media or something. You want to fight against Google and you want to fight against YouTube censorship and all this you want to do. But you don't have a decent job. You don't have a decent salary. You're just, you know, working as something small, struggling to make ends meet. Your own house is like, you know, Jordan Peterson used to say, your own house is not in order, but you want to solve the problems of the world. It's like Greta Thunberg. She wants to do what? Climate change, this, that. Where are all of them? Where are they? Vanished. Nowhere. Before the world. See, here's a bigger question. Where is terrorism? What happened to all the terrorists? What happened to all the, you know, Muslim terrorists, jihadists, and they were going to bomb the world and the wars. Why all of the all of them look like they have taken a break? How come? All the terrorists have taken a holiday? There is no terrorist, there is no fear. Suddenly, US doesn't have to attack the terrorists. Terrorists have decided, okay, we'll take a holiday, okay. You take a holiday, we take a holiday, yalla. Let's enjoy. Or oh, let's, uh, man, listen, we are busy, fight the virus. And then America's, are, yeah, yeah, okay, fine, all right. We'll not kill each other, yalla. You take care, see you, man. Meet you after the coronavirus. Okay, take care, take care, bye. Where are all the terrorists? Where are the, you know, the problems before the virus? Where are they? Before it was China versus US, tariff wars, this, that, economic, oh, this terrorism. All that is stopped. All that is stopped. Now everyone's worried about, okay, 
virus. So we need to focus on the mess in our house. Uh, we live in a day and time, a day and age, where today this social media is, instead of becoming a good thing, it's becoming a fucking nuisance, man. Absolute fucking nuisance. Like, um, you know, this, um, like I tell people, um, today on social media, a girl, if she shows her bum, you know, pose of her ass or a breast or a little bit of a cleavage, she'll get, uh, I think, 1000 likes, 100 comments, 200 comments. She's like, wow, people like me. Wow, I'm noticed. Wow, I'm a star. But if she were to put something intelligent, something noteworthy, no likes, no comments, try that. Tell a girl or create a fake girl's account. Put something in a sexy or... Oh, fuck. The number of likes and number of comments for the ass and boob shot. And put something intelligent, nobody's bothered. So what is the message that they're getting? If I sexualize myself, if I objectify myself, I am special. If I put something related to ordinary stuff, I'm not special. Where do you think the generation is going? Everyone's showing their muscles. Everyone's flexing their expensive cars. Why do you think these internet marketers are making money? Everyone wants to be rich fast. We live this. We live in a day and age where the pressure of social media to look amazing, to get you know these virtual likes is virtual comments to get the social proof social validation you have to show a perfect life you have to show the perfect photograph you have to show the perfect filter you have to show the perfect update but then if you see their real life they are just they they're living a very ordinary life it's a difficult life it's a tough life See, there is no easy way to get rich. There is no easy way. There is no secrets of success. There is no secrets of... See, secret of success you want? Work fucking hard. Work fucking hard. Work fucking smart. Bust your ass. That's it. Ah, secret of success. Oh, I made seven figure income. He made seven figure income because idiots like you paid him the money. People show expensive car, expensive house. They show their beautiful girls. They show... <laughs> See, if, if someone really has to do something, no, they will sit and work. Okay, social media people and online people who are making a living online like myself, fine, we have to keep the ball rolling. But even there, you have to keep it real. I, I show you my small little house. I show you playing with the baby. I show you the mess. What the fuck am I going to show off? For what? Show off and do what? And if I show off, then if I put on a fake image, how long can I maintain it? The headache to maintain the fucking lie is another headache. Just uh, see, listen, guys. Social media is a tool. Don't make it your priority. It's a tool... But your actual priority should be number one, making money. Most important. Yeah, whatever shit they'll say, your money is not everything. That person, the monks, uh, you know, the guy sold his car, uh, sold his Ferrari to become a monk. Yeah, first you make enough money to buy a Ferrari, then you sell, no? You don't have that much also. What the fuck are you talking? And uh, stop fighting and arguing about Modi and the economy and all that. Sit and look at your life. You're a fucking bank balance, man. You don't have fucking money to pay your bills. What the fuck are you going around arguing with everyone? Ah, just doesn't make sense. I speak to so many of these guys who argue left, right and center, who share these 
posts and they are so hyper on social media. But then, when you ask them about their life, they are in a really terrible state, man. You know, people have something to do, no? You don't have time to waste with all this shit. People are losing their jobs and... Please focus on your priorities. Please focus on doing something. Please. You know, make something worthwhile. Fine, social media is fun. Enjoy. But get your priorities sorted out. That's all I want to say in today's session. Anyway, love to read your comments and thoughts. Do let me know. This is me signing off. You guys take care.